Good morning, everyone. So glad to be here with all of you today. <coughs> and, to share with, and to share with you an update on what we've been working with, or what we've been working on at the Technical Oversight Committee. But before I start, as a, in, in a show of applause, how many of you have heard of the TOC? Sweet. How many of you feel you have an understanding of what it is that we do? Nice, awesome. <clears throat> so the Technical Oversight Committee, uh, as a quick overview, is, a, is the technical governing body of the CNCF. And we work together as a team to evaluate projects for inclusion and to work with those projects once they are a part of our sandbox or incubation project to get them toward graduation. This takes quite a lot of work. There are about 11 of us, but we do a lot of, we do a lot of this work. We're also supported in this work by technical advisory groups. These technical advisory groups are focused on different domains, everything from security to contributor strategy, observability, There's a ton, there, there are quite a few different projects that are focused on specific domains. This is what we look like. If you see any of these people out there in the hallway, or if you have seen them, or if they're here, I would love, you know, definitely say hello to them. I've worked with a lot of technologists in my time, and I can tell you and assure you that each of these are absolutely amazing. They have a passion for open source and technology, and they just, they help us make such a big difference in the way that we're doing all of this work. This year, we've had the opportunity to all meet and work together for, the, for one of the first times in the TOC period, and, that, and we got so much done in that period, it was just absolutely awesome. One of the consistent themes so far this, in our efforts this year has been scale. We are, again, 11 people, so how do we actually, um, how do we help process all of the work that we're trying to do uh, in, in, in evaluating projects and helping those projects graduate and helping to understand the health of those projects? How do we actually get all of that done when we also have full-time jobs? And so some of the work that we're doing here is actually um, trying to help automate the work of, uh, of gathering information about health and those sorts of things. So that's been one of the areas of focus for us, for us this year. As, part of the, as another part of the work in 2023, the TOC has been reevaluating a lot of the existing moving level, moving level structure. So how do you actually get a project into the CNCF? How do we determine that the project has met particular criteria before moving them to incubation? Again, to graduation. How are we ensuring that we understand the health of that project and we do you know, annual reviews of those projects as we go? <coughs> so we've got a lot to accomplish and we have a lot more to do. And we realize that perhaps you will decide to come and be a part of it. <coughs> we've been working recently, as I, as I mentioned, on coming up with suggested improvements on the project, project's moving levels piece. And this has been a lot of work, and it's actually in, involved a lot of people from outside of the TOC, just in the community in general, which is, you know, very much the open source way. But we've been very, we've been uh, very, you know, George Castro and Josh Burkus have just, among many, many others, have been very influential in that. We are also working through a backlog of annual reviews, right? Understanding the health of projects and determining if everything is on, you know, moving in the right direction for those projects as we move through. But as we grow the number of projects that work is uh, it continues to get more, we continue to have more and more of that work. We've created a new project board. If you go to github.com slash CNCF, you can find that project board. The project board intent is to actually provide more transparency around the work that's being done. So if you're curious about what we're up to, that's a great place to start. And finally, we are working to enable our technical advisory groups to be part of that work, right? So that we're not, it's not just 11 people doing all of this, it's all of us together trying to accomplish that work. <clears throat> Speaking of our technical advisory groups, please help me welcome to the stage some of the leaders of those groups. We have Ricardo Aravena from TAG Runtime, Alolita Sharma from TAG Observability, Catherine Paganini from TAG Distributor Strategy, and Pushkar Jaglakar from TAG Security. I think I need to be there. You need to be there. No problem. Sorry, that's All good. <laughs> <sighs> Thank you for joining me up here. Yeah, you know, it's awesome to see you all here. 
So a lot of people aren't familiar with the tags or the way to contribute to work that they're focused on. What makes tags and their placement in the, in the ecosystem uniquely rewarding, and what brought you to this work? Myself, I started attending the events, uh, joining the meetings, and getting excited about the technology, about the CNCF projects, about Kubernetes. Uh, so I started around 2019 and uh, contributed to the, to the TOC meeting, and, and it's, the TOC was actually growing, and a lot of new projects wanted to join the CNCF, so they needed to expand, so they created the tax structure technical advisory groups to help them out. And I actually jumped on the opportunity to become part of uh, the leadership uh, of the TAC runtime. And yeah, and, and that's how I continue participating and kept uh, reaching out to different communities and uh, making the TAC grow and, and, and helping out the, the projects uh, through the different stages. Um, I got involved in the uh, tags as a uh, contributor to Open Telemetry, and uh, as we were working uh, across different projects, you know, especially I was uh, at that time working with uh, Prome the Prometheus project as well as Open Metrics very closely in the space of observability. So um, again, uh, working across projects, I think, uh, really drove me to participate in the tag because TAG is kind of the glue where you know, all the projects come together and also uh, as a supporting group of the TOC, it really enables you know, all the projects to facilitate uh, communication across and collaboration across the different projects. And uh, I found that very compelling in the observability TAG because it really enabled everyone to come together at the table and contribute. Yeah, so I started, or I initially joined because I had just joined the Linkerd team, and uh, I want, that was my first time being part of open source. So I wanted to learn about growing your community and all that stuff, so I joined the Tag Contributor Strategy. Um, and why I s I'm still around, right? Because it's, it's really about the people. So I think like you get so much more out of it than you actually think. You um, meet people from different countries, different companies, different backgrounds, you collaborate, you're really growing your professional network. Uh, it's incredibly rewarding, uh, and so that's not something I expected, right? It's not, I thought I'd come in and then I leave or something, right? Yeah. And um, there are a lot of benefits, like, and for instance, like perks, like being here on stage with all of you, right? Like we would not be here if it wasn't for the tag. So there are a lot of reasons to be and join, and I encourage everyone to really, yeah, just participate in the tags. Yeah, I mean, for me, everyone's contributor journey is different, so I'll maybe start sharing a bit about like how I started. I think in 2019, I was a first-time attendee, first-time speaker, like many of you. I just popped into one of the maintainer track sessions for a security tag, asked them some really hard questions, and they were like, you should join our meetings. So. I went, joined the meetings, uh, got to know about the work they do, started contributing, and with a lot of help from Emeritus Shares, became a tech lead a few months later, and then led a bunch of different projects. And uh, recently, this year, uh, I became co-chair, so now my job is to make things better for people who are going to follow me. Nice. So one of the things that the TOC and the TAGs work together on is the formation of working groups. And these working groups can be, will generally be focused on a specific topic or, or a specific domain, some, some specific outcome. <coughs> Catherine, you've been working with one recently. Yeah, so uh, I'm very excited because we have a brand new deaf and hard of hearing working group. Um, and it's literally just four months old or so. And uh, we've made some big wins. Um, I don't know, you may have seen uh, some of our deaf attendees walking around with their interpreters, or they're here in the first row. If you're close enough, you might see them. Um, so that's really exciting. And so basically, our goal is to create um, pathways for deaf and hard of hearing into open source. Uh, we really want them to become active, visible participants, right? And the first step is really 
um, to make conferences like KubeCon accessible, right? Because if you cannot come here, be with the community, talk with people, how can you participate, right? That's the really important first step. Um, and so, so we're really, really excited that the Linux Foundation events team was able to make these accommodations on such short notice. Mm -hmm. We're literally talking about four weeks. That was when we provided the recommendations. So really huge shout out to the Linux Foundation events team, uh, CNCF, and especially Chris Anacek, who's been like so supportive from day one. So uh, I'm really amazed and really um, excited about that. Um, but yeah, our members were not only attending. Uh, you might have seen uh, um, Rob Koch uh, provide, uh, gave a lightning talk. Uh, he's one of our co-chairs. Uh, and Destiny uh, O'Connor was yesterday here at a keynote panel discussion as well. She's also another co-chair. And Jay Jackson also um, participated in a keynote, uh, in, a keynote not in a panel discussion. So that's three deaf speakers at the very first KubeCon accessible to the deaf, which is really amazing, yeah. yeah. Um, and uh, yeah, so hopefully seeing, we're gonna see more of this in Paris and so on, so um, we're working on that. But again, we're just four months old, so I think this is amazing. Uh, and so what we basically do, we try to create recommendations because we wanna educate conference organizers first because like Linux Foundation, right? <laughs> uh, but these recommendations are public and we really hope that any uh, conference organizer kind of uses them as well. Um, uh, project owners are next, right? Of course, like if we have maintainers here, um, we really wanna uh, make sure that you know how to make your project more accessible. Employers are really important because it all comes down to employment opportunities. That's the most important thing. But also the community, uh, community right? Like, so we really wanna educate you. We need your support. Um, we cannot make this possible uh, um, unless the community really supports this cause, right? So I encourage everyone to learn about accessibility. But what does it mean? What does real accessibility mean? And little hint, captions are not enough, <laughs> right? Uh, so we are publishing our recommendations on um, contribute.cncf.io. Uh, there's not a lot there yet, but it's gonna grow. Uh, so yeah, uh, learn about it. If you see one of our deaf or hard of hearing attendees, uh, walking around, uh, swing by and say hi. Uh, we really, really need allies uh, to make changes beyond coupon, right? And again, it really comes at the end, it comes to employment and opportunities. That's the most important thing, yeah. Thank you. I think uh, I also wanted to kind of do a shout out for one of the very interesting uh, work groups that we actually kicked off in the observability tag this year. Uh, and that's the query language standardization work group for uh, observability. And as many of you know who use you know, different vendor products, query languages have been very specific to each vendor implementation. And this work group really it was driven and started by end users, uh, Netflix as well as eBay. Uh, and other um, end users actually kicked this work group off where um, having these islands of query languages is really very, very tough for as a integration point for end users to integrate data and be able to use it for observability across these islands. So the query language standardization group, which is super exciting in the world of observability, really bridges those islands together. It, it is an attempt to actually draft up a specification of the common query um, uh, functionality, if you will, which is used across different types of data to be able to then have a specification that can be taken by any project in the observability space, especially in the CNCF, uh, to be implemented. So that's super exciting. If any of you are interested, you know, please, please join in into the discussions. Uh, several vendors have already been contributing to the group, and it's a really wonderful example of collaboration uh, with end user requirements coming in uh, and really driving in uh, and common uh, collaboration effort across everyone who is contributing to the projects. So with that, I want to say thank you for joining, joining me up on stage and, and helping inspire all of these wonderful people. And I also want to remind all of you that if you want to get involved, even if it's just to find out what's happening in the space, please join us at cncf.io. You'll find all kinds 
of, uh, you'll find a schedule that shows all of the different meetings, both of the technical advisor groups and also the working groups, and lots of really great ways to get involved in all of the work that we're doing here. So thank you for being here, thank you for being you, and we'll see you out there.